Don't Know Instructions. I'm Bob. I'm Josh. Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? I am well. You're wearing jeans and long sleeves. I am wearing long sleeves that have been pulled up, as previously noted. (laughs) It's my tough guy look. This this so so tough is a. Is this a sweater? This is a sweater. Um, it has a hood. So yep. in my yeah. mind, anything that has a hood becomes a hoodie, even if it were something else. Like if you had a tank top with a mm-hmm. hood, it becomes a hoodie. Well, this is not sponsored, but I I subscribed to Stitch Fix. Oh. Yeah, after you did. Mm-hmm. Has your sister got you that as a present or something uh, one time? She got it, and then I thought I would try it out. I tried mm-hmm. it out for a very short amount of time. But. Yeah, so I've gotten it a couple times, and it's pretty good because I hate shopping. I absolutely hate shopping for clothes. Like, I'm a bigger guy, and I'm, like, in between sizes. So shopping for clothes is always a torturous, ridiculous thing. And men's clothes are expensive. So for someone to ship me clothes they think I like, eh, it's weird. They have usually you had like, good luck with it? Yeah. Really? So I have this hoodie-sweater combo <laughs> and a it's blue sweater. It's better than, sweater. like, a hoodie-pants combo. It's a shooty. A shwooty. <laughs> a shwooty. It's not the swoot like a new girl, but... The shrewdy. And then there's another, this was like the sweater package. And then I had a blue sweater that I wore uh, the other day at church. Hmm. And then like, like the, what do I have? Like a couple pairs of shorts. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Like I, it's maybe one thing per thing per batch. And then there was yeah. a time where I like didn't buy anything. There was probably a couple I didn't buy anything, but I like it. And again, this is not sponsored. I just think it's neat. Hmm. So this is not something that I would buy for myself. But some algorithm shipped it to my house, and I went, that's not so bad. Well, apparently there's a person behind that that actually does the mm, thing. Allegedly. Know, but mine seemed to not know how to read, because every time I typed in a thing that said, I don't like this, they were like, you mean pink? You, you like pink? More I'll send you pink. Yeah, so I got a whole lot of stuff that I didn't like. Oddly enough, one of the few things that I bought from Stitch Fix was a jacket. <laughs> so many jackets. We're gonna. This is. I like to make stuff. Next video is we're just gonna build like Bob a jacket closet. As a closet for jackets. Yeah. It is a cool jacket though. Um. But that's about it. I mean, I I got a couple shirts and it was more like, well, I should probably like these shirts. Like I don't have anything like this, so maybe I should expand. And then I bought them and then they sit in my closet. And I still don't wear them because I didn't. Yeah. You know. Jenny has been getting it. And uh, she's had some good luck with it, but I don't know. Me, I, I guess I'm just I'm too picky about what I wear, which is a pretty limited palette of stuff anyway. And I don't know, whatever. <clears throat> My throat's uh, a little scratchy today. Apologies for people listening. Well, I figured I needed to branch out beyond board shorts. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Since someone gave me crap about it last time. <laughs> I didn't give <laughs> crap about it. Anyway, have you closed the pool yet? Not is yet. It, is it that cold for you yet? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to get in that water. <laughs> gotcha. So I've been looking up different ways of closing the pool, uh, putting the tarp on, and I found this guy's video, and it's pretty cool because the last couple times I've done it, you just like put a tarp around it. We have these water bags that zip tie around the outside. They're super cumbersome and dumb. My dad helped me last time fill them up. It's it, it's terrible. The system is bad. So this guy online took the the tarp laid it on top of the water and like didn't drop the water level as low as I usually do. And then took the return, like where the water sprays out into the pool, like Mm -hmm. one of those valves attached it to the underside of the tarp as a drain. And then connected that took out the little ball thingy that you can rotate to spray the water in. So Took one of those, attached it to the top, put a 90 degree bend so it goes out the side of the pool and just drains away. And since I have this cool dope drain thing that I added to my yard, the hose is now long enough. And then you take, so you, you set it on top of the water. And so any water that accumulates on the top goes out the drain. Oh. And you get like a, a PVC pipe system uh, with like just connectors. I think I did the math at like 10 one inch diameter PVC pipe, you link them all together. So it makes like a crown that like pushes against the side of the pool. And then a couple little uprights that'll push downward, like underneath the lip. So it's like a vacuum sealed, like perfectly kept, you know, batch of good water underneath that never gets any nasty water 
inside and the nasty water doesn't like droop and pull down the sides of the tarp because that brings the sides of the pool in. And so I have to, I have some of those components. I'm amassing the rest of them so I can make this new. What's like, wait? What stops the tarp from sinking in the pool? Uh, oh, it still like crowns up over the edge of the pool. But still, what stops it from just falling in eventually? Falling in eventually. Well, it doesn't sink because it's never overtaken by water on top. It just oh, sits okay. on top of the water. Hmm. It's like plastic yeah. wrap over yeah. a cup. Okay. But then as you're filling up the cup, there's also a drain in that plastic wrap that goes out of the side of the cup that is also never touching the water in the cup. Interesting. Yeah, I was I was pretty stoked. I, I looked through many, many, many of people's hmm. cool DIY pool tarps, and some of them are like, just fill it with air. <laughs> and I was like, this, that's dumb. Like, what? No. <laughs> and somewhere, like, you can take a bunch of PVC pipe and you make, like, a a convex basket over the top that like oh yeah sits on the inside yeah but then that's like if you don't have enough of them then the water is still going to accumulate in the slices mm-hmm. of that thing so that was the one i thought was the neatest and uh one i think i'm gonna actually do yeah that's interesting yeah yeah we've talked to i don't know if we talked about it on here but we had the safety cover thing on ours and that was always just like the Gave me the most peace of mind, but it also you didn't have to worry about it, the water pooling on top because it was like a kind of mesh. Mm-hmm. And so the water just went down into it and it it was really dirty at the end of the year because it wasn't a solid tarp. Yeah. Or in, in the spring. So it took a while to clean it, but I didn't have to worry about any of that stuff throughout the winter. It was like I just covered it, done, walk away, you know, which was nice. But I don't really envy anybody that has to keep up with the pool anymore after having done it and i know we've talked about it you don't mind that's awesome i'm glad but i'm i'm glad to not have to do it anymore like i said i have replaced yard maintenance with pool maintenance because yeah. i don't mow my grass my neighbor has a big huge awesome lawn mower and i will <clears throat> happily pay him all the shekels in my bank account so that he can do it for me because <laughs> i don't want to I think you need to talk to your bank if they're keeping your money in shekels just a guess well, what else is going on? Anything new in family land or? Uh, my son properly apologized to the kid. They got over oh, that good. thing from last week Excellent. and they're buddies. Good. So it totally worked. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So the, the same thing that you had with your son that um, you went with him and he was able to like own up to his mistakes. My son did the same thing based on that conversation that we had and it all worked out. Good. Everybody's, everybody's good. It is. The matter is settled. Good. Until the next time. <laughs> Yeah. With kids, it won't take long. Yep. Well, that's good. I'm glad that, that worked out. Did you feel vindicated at all in that? Vindicated? No. I felt like I did it right. Oh. Well, there's vindication in that. I guess sure. yourself. <laughs> like, usually I feel this way, but this time, I got it. I, I felt like I had to dig a little deep for this one. Hmm. And I guess you're vindicated. Like, uh, it was worth the effort. Like, giving him the benefit of the doubt teaching him how to properly apologize. Like it all just kind of worked. It came together Yeah, and everybody was fine. And it's one of those like not all heroes wear capes things where it's like, I can look out over the, my little slice of world. You're like, I have brought peace <laughs> upon the homeland <laughs> and all is right until the next time. <laughs> well, I'm glad you look at it that way. That's cool. It's, a, it's not, not an excessive way to look at it at all. It's great. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Um, we we had quite a bit of uh, influx of of commentary last time about our our restaurant discussion. I don't know if you got that, but I, I got didn't <laughs> through social media. I expected us to have a lot more. We only had one comment from Brian. Brian, I know Brian about our our um, misuse of the word local restaurant. Did I say ro- local I, restaurant? I said it. Oh, okay. It was me. I was just thinking like things near us because like local as in physically local. It's actually from Wisconsin, Bob. <laughs> I don't know Brian, but I'm imagining. You know Brian Prusa. Brian. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. That's not what he <laughs> so, sounds like. <laughs> that's not what he sounds like at all. Um, but he gave us a little hard time about that. But what I meant by local was like within walking distance. I could, you could walk to those We could totally yeah, walk to those restaurants. Walk to those. We walked farther. I ran further than that this morning. Do you? Um, so, yeah, not local as in local. I would never want to get rid of an actual local restaurant at all. 
Well, <laughs> let them be. I'm not saying I'm not saying you have to go there, but like let them. There be. was that one, and then they went out of business, and I just went, "Told you so." <laughs> what? Told you. Which one? Well, I can't say because then people oh, are gonna know true. where we live, and oh, we yeah. love you and all, but like boundaries, people. <laughs> <laughs> but that one that's across from uh, the courthousey place, that's oh. now oh, owned yeah, by whatever yeah, Jenny's whatever yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. ones that I would stand on that sidewalk while they're carrying their boxes and stuff out. Go, yeah, <laughs> told you. Wow, cool. I mean, no hard feelings, but you kind of you were asking for it. Yeah, you had this coming. <laughs> Capitalism. Cool. Um, any any new uh, like. Watching anything, playing anything new? Did I tell you I finished Fallen Order? You did. I f- okay. Well, I'm excited. I'm just as excited now <laughs> as I was when you told me the first time. I couldn't remember. But I finally finished a video game. It's the first video game I finished in... I don't even remember. So you don't like Zelda. Or you don't and care no, no, about no, no, Zelda. No, no, no. I have never played a Zelda game. Okay. Not for any particular reason. I've just well, never... I don't think what I'm about to say is going to sway your decision one way or the other to immediately jump on playing Breath of the Wild. But the ending of Breath of the Wild was disappointing. Really? I was sad. Well, that's definitely not going to make me Not sad play. like, oh, man, the game's over. Sad like, what? This is garbage. Oh. I had an amazing moment with my son. We were so, like, happy that we had completed this game. And I'm like, yes, the, the theatrical ending is going to be so good because this game is literally the best game I've ever played. And then it was not. And so I went back and tried to beat the game in several different ways, hoping that it would change the outcome. And it hmm. did slightly, but still left you wanting. Interesting. So the game is still amazing, but the ending, they they, they got tired and went home. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of work. I, I never had a Nintendo growing up, um, so I only played games at friends' houses, and Zelda was one of those that I, I guess it was just a bigger investment. You know, I mean, yeah. you you, oh, yeah. you kept going with it. It wasn't like, well, I died, so we may as well start over tomorrow because it's not going to be any different. Um, and so that was one I just never really played. I mean, I didn't play a lot of games growing up at all, but I never got that one. And then once I had never played that one, I didn't have any reason to, yeah, you know, just like try the next newest one. I've heard so many good things about Breath of the Wild, though. But it's amazing. What? What? It doesn't. Actual stop. question: What is amazing about it? Just the First open off. open-endedness of it. Well, yes, <clears throat> but the world doesn't load. There's oh. no loading screen. Oh, you can right. just go yeah forever and ever and ever like if lord of the rings were a game sorry and you can see like mount doom way off in the distance and it's all parallaxed and you can you have a sense of scale you are kept in a world but there are so many different just biomes and just like the depths and layering and the, the the height and the depth of the game that you could easily forget where you are and get lost in this world that you don't have to wait for a loading screen. It, you can just go. So forever. it's not it's not that they trick you by keeping your visual distance really close or you're always in like a canyon mm-hmm. or anything like that. Nope. Huh. You have a little hang glider and so you can climb to the tallest mountain in this hang glider and just hang glide as far as you can possibly go. Hmm. And it's cool because when you're cold, like you start to shiver and you start to die. Like you got to put on some stuff because you're cold. And the same thing when you're hot and when you're hungry and you got to make food. And like besides the adventure uh, tasks, the adventure related tasks in the game and the lore of Ganon and the calamity and all these things, like it's a lot of very practical things. You have to sleep. You have to eat. And you got to go fishing. And in a world that is so easy to be immersed in the world because it doesn't stop you to load a new element. Oh, right. Yeah, it didn't break that. Yeah. Hmm. You can just get lost in it. You can go on as many little side quests as you want. You can sprint directly to the castle and take on the big bad if you really, really want to. Hmm. There's a lot of story elements in it. There's some love story, some drama. Like, it's it's so good. So good. Well, I mean, at this point, not having ever played any of the zelda games is that a place to jump in you very easily could so my from my understanding the games are similar and have the same characters but are not necessarily sequential is that right that's correct okay well, one game like while they would have some of the same characters it's not a sequel to the game so you don't have to like know what you did in the last one to prepare you for this one hmm. everything is so spelled out um 
it, it starts you off in like your your underwear <laughs> and you have to get clothes. Hmm. You have to get a sword. Like it's not like the original where you just you're in a little field and there's a hole in the wall and you're like, I wonder what's in that hole. And someone's like, here, have a sword. Like that's right. not how adventures work. Like <laughs> apparently adventures work where you wake up from being asleep for a long time in a cave in your underwear and then you walk out and you're like, well, there's some trees and there's a the stuff. And it's very Minecraft-esque to where the closest things around you when you start, like there's a stick. And there's a bad guy, and I better be able to beat the bad guy up with the stick. Hmm. And then there's, well, because you're in this world that has had stuff happen to it, you're like, oh, there's a rusty sword sticking out of the ground way over there. Like, well, I'll take that one, and it breaks a lot faster. And So it's it's very immersive, and it is so open-ended that you can, you can never be done with the game. And then there's download DLC, the downloadable content that you can add as much <laughs> additional content to that game as you want really? and have a unique game experience. Yep. Oh, hmm. I, I did not know about that. It just keeps going. That's it. It just keeps going. Well, so that's problematic for me because then, I mean, I have a hard time finishing games anyway. Well, again, you can beat the big bad and you can say, we beat the game. You can make that declaration, gotcha. but you have not completed the game. You can beat it yeah, no without to me. <laughs> completing it. So there's always little side quests. Like yeah. there's shrines and things that like pop out of the ground you have to find. There's little seeds and things that you can get from these little funny characters. And there's always like additional side quests to do. And eventually I'm sure you will run out of them after enough continuous gameplay. Or you can go the traditional game route where you go to these four particular big levels and then it will help you beat the big bad in the middle roll credits. Hmm. So you can have either or. Gotcha. Well, I don't know if I'll play it or not. I mean, it sounds good, but it sounds like a big investment. It is. <laughs> and then I'm thinking ahead of like, I'd like to get a PS5 if I can somehow, and I'd like to play Squadron. Yeah, did you I, try? I tried uh, twice, but I mean, it's they were gone in Whoa. seconds. You know, there's... Were there not enough? Well, it's kind of weird. I, they're not releasing them... Uh, they're doing it like in waves, I guess, for different retail retailers get different amounts of them, and then they pre-sell them. And they keep saying they're going to continue continue to do that over the next, you know, several months throughout the holidays and stuff. But there's no guarantee how many there will be per uh, retailer, or uh, who knows. Mm. I don't know. I'm just going to give it oh. a shot. It's not like I need it, you know. So I'll try, and if it doesn't work, I'll wait. Like everybody else, and I'll get one whenever I can get one. Hmm. That's but very responsible and reasonable. Of <laughs> I did see uh, some talk about patents that were filed for uh, PSVR 2. Oh, really? Yeah. So at least I know that that is on the horizon. So that's something. You know. I watched some gameplay from Star Wars Squadrons, that flying game, yeah. and you will throw up playing that game in VR. Just watching that guy like swing all around in in 2d hmm. like man i am just nothing just making you puke. don't you think that's different though with you being in control of you know your brain at least kind of predicting the motion that it's supposed to be moving yes but your seeing... body doesn't work with it yeah like your perception of things is based on your 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 ears your eyes and the the meat in your butt and when you only have one of those things working together to give you your relative position yeah it starts messing with your brain Hmm. Well, we'll your find out. Your proprioceptive system. Sorry, now you're meeting your butt. All right, there you go. <laughs> Too late. You said it. Well, I'm still going to give it a shot. I think it'd be like that's my reason to try or to buy. Oh, I want to try. VR, Hands sure. down. You know. But. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, this is unrelated to that, but I'm looking at the. Uh, I almost called it Falcon Crest. That was a show. <laughs> the Razor Crest in front of us. Um, the Lego set that we're currently making? Yes, yeah. that's what we're both working on. Both on the same bag. Mm -hmm. um, did you see the Razor Crest set, the toy set that they announced? So Hasbro has this. You didn't. I can tell by your face. <clears throat> did you? No. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I can tell. I wasn't making any face. Well, I know you weren't going oh. like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. uh, yeah, that looks really cool. I know it's too late. Um, so Hasbro has this thing called Hasbro Plus. Not Plus. D uh, everything's Plus. Yeah. Hasbro. 
Pulse, not plus. It's a pulse. Those are That's different weird. words, but very similar. You just drop the letters on the ground and picked them up in a different <laughs> order. <laughs> You're like, everybody else has a plus. Let's just put an E on it. Um, so they have this thing where they... <laughs> I can't spell Cum- very well. Cumulatively, <laughs> not like... Sorry, not, not just stick it on the end of the word. Goodness gracious. Anyway, they have this thing where they do crowdfunding for toys. That's cool. So instead of just, you know, assuming that somebody's going to buy giant toy, making a whole bunch of them and then losing money on them, they do crowdfunding, kind of like Lego does for the Lego Ideas thing, mm-hmm. where they get some commitment from people. But this is actually you prepay for the thing. So they've done this with a bunch of different things. But in Star Wars, they did um, they did a sail barge that's like legit Whoa. huge sail barge. It was like $500. Sandbox. Yeah, size huge, wow. and so this one they're doing the Razor Crest, but it's scaled to the three and three quarter inch figure. Whoa! And it is That's massive. Big. And the thing that they released were just renders of it, but I mean it is huge and incredibly detailed. Hmm. So on the inside, you know, the whole back section of it, they have like the gun cabinet and the hanging frozen people and yep. the back tube and the, all the stuff in there and. It looks amazing, and it was just a render, um, but it's three hundred fifty dollars. That's for the commitment of what that thing <clears throat> is and the size. You would have to assign a price tag like that. And I heard—I don't know if this is actually true because I'm not sure if I read this in the article or on the Hasbro site—that it's not going to be like if you buy a Star Wars ship at the store, it's like a thin plastic shell yeah. that is the shape. That was going to be my next question. This is a solid piece of plastic. Ooh. I don't know how they would do that. I'm sure it's multiple pieces of plastic, but it's a solid, massive thing. And I'm not going to buy it because <laughs> I have no reason to buy it. But, man, that would be really cool to have. That would go were... along with that thing that we've been talking about. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> man, I didn't even need to push you over the ledge. I needed to just whisper oh, quietly, man. and you just jumped right over it. Yeah, I still don't want That's $350. But, I mean, where are we going to put the other thing anyway? True. If you're going to get wet, might as well go swimming. (laughs) (sighs) Well, I know that is all super cryptic for everybody listening and watching, but, you know, you'll see one of these days. Anyway, it's a very cool thing. Uh, I'm excited about... uh, I missed a piece here. I'm excited about seeing it in real life, whether I buy it or not. I think it will be cool. You know the easiest way to see it in real life? Is to buy it. Just buy it. <laughs> and you could charge a mission for other people to see it in real life. Huh. That's interesting. See? Then turn it around. So, kids, if you don't <laughs> want your allowance this week, I'll let you go down and look at the Razor Crest for 10 minutes. That's and a, then for that's Razor incredible. Crest Plus, you can maybe touch Ooh. it. Ooh. You have to pay me and still do your chores. That's like a pretty good deal. I think we've cornered how to do this. <laughs> Anyway, so that, that's a pretty cool thing. It would be neat to see something like that. But, I mean, honestly, it's a it's a huge thing. It's a huge amount of money. And I already buy a bunch of things that I can't do anything with. I just like to look at. So. But like Lego, does it need to reach a certain threshold before they produce it? Or are they I'm making sure. them to order? I'm not sure. I, I've never bought anything from it. I've barely paid attention to it. So I'm not really sure what the process is for that. I, I think there probably is a low bar that it has to hit but i think it's pretty low um i did see some of the the big sail barge when i went to um star wars celebration a few Mm -hmm. years back they had a few of them and i mean the box was three quarters of the length of this table it was huge just massive thing it almost looked like a fake box it was so big like why would anybody make a star wars toy that big but anyway so there's that that's all i have I have no other new things. Something is wrong here. Of interest. What? Oh, I put the wrong pieces on. <laughs> That'll do it. That's it. All right. So um, we had some more questions from from last week, or not last week? What we did last All week. Right. We have Anthony create some new questions for us to answer. Yeah, my, this is a my mixture. My throat is failing. I'm uh, sorry. Questions from Anthony and questions and pros and cons from the Maker Alliance. Yes. So let's start with Anthony's questions. Anthony, what you got? Uh, I am more prepared this time. Yep. So, first question. First question. You can only drink coffee ever or never drink coffee again. 
Okay. Question was, would you exclusively drink coffee or never be able to drink coffee? I would choose never be able to drink coffee because I can do that. Yeah, I think I would do the same. I mean, I like coffee a lot. Yeah. I would be okay if, if, like, the doctor was like, I'm sorry, Bob, I have some bad news. You can only ever drink coffee from now on. I'd be like, yeah, oh, all right, cool. What kind of doctor are you? <laughs> but if, Not a dentist. <laughs> um, but if, you know, they said you could never have it again, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. So here in Kentucky, we have those kind of ticks that make you allergic to meat. Lone and, Star. Yeah, I am very afraid of them. Like, really? I don't want that for me. Right? Like we talked about, oh, I don't want to jump on a trampoline because I might get hurt. Sure. <laughs> Lone Star ticks. I don't want to be allergic to meat. That sounds terrible. So anybody that doesn't know that about this, there's a Lone Star tick. It's a tick that has a little white dot on its back. They, I believe, were south and they are moving northward. Oh, no. Maybe it's the opposite. I don't know. Whatever. We're right in the middle and we're there in our area now. It's not like every bite from this type of tick gives you that thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a lot of ticks out at the farm, so I looked this up because we saw a few of these out there. And it turns out that um, from my two and a half minutes of research that these um, ticks, they're, something in their bite uh, tends to blend with certain body chemistry and will make that person allergic to red meat, red meat only. And by it's allergic, it means your stomach really hurts. Uh, you probably get diarrhea. You may throw up a little bit. It's not like you like break out in hives. You just can't process the meat for up to two years. That's an important thing that gets left out of that conversation a lot, is that it's not necessarily a lifelong thing. It's typically is something that will fade away over time. So I don't want that to happen either. But, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not going to stay inside because of it. I'm not staying inside, but... There's a big horse pasture in our backyard that I was telling my son, like, you should just go out there and go explore. And then I, I looked out there and there's like some shin high, like just scrub brush the entire way. I'm like, ooh, I'm not going out there. I want to eat steak tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have this spray that is not, we don't use like real heavy duty bug spray type, DEET type stuff. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, we try to avoid harsh chemical stuff. And it's, it's like a lemongrass something or other natural i don't know you can buy it at the store and we use it every time we go to the farm except for last time and <laughs> it's always worked really well occasionally we'll get a tick and you know from walking around in the woods mowing high grass all this stuff occasionally you'll get a tick on your leg or something but we've never come home with like oh no so and so has a bunch of them and we have to pick them all off or whatever it's just like maybe every once in a while there's one and they're all over the place out there so last time, last weekend, we went out there and um, just jumped out of the car. Everybody ran off into the woods and started mowing and whatever. And I just, it slipped my mind that we should spray down with this stuff. So my oldest son had long pants and a long t-shirt on because it was a little bit cooler. He was out in the woods by himself playing, running around. Everybody else was in shorts. Everybody was in shorts. We come back that night. And we get him all showered in bed. And he comes down and he's like, I just found like 20 ticks on my leg. And I'm like, oh, that's impossible. <laughs> but I go to look at him and there are these tiny, tiny, the tiniest possible bug you can imagine mm -hmm. on his leg. And they're so tiny that you can't see that they're ticks. Mm -hmm. But you just kind of assume that they're ticks because they're kind of stuck to them. You got to pick them off. Like, go ahead, tweezers. And I was picking them off. And... I picked off 10 or 11 after he told me about it. Turns out from a little research and the next day we realized that they were chiggers and he yeah. has them a hundred percent top to bottom. They are all over the place. And this was a week and a half ago or so. So at this point they're just, you know, need to go away. They're not bothering him anymore, but man, so many just yep. everywhere. And I remember we were, you and I were talking about t or, uh, chiggers before and you said something about smothering them? Yep. Apparently, that's not true. Well, I mean, yeah. I I got chiggers when I was a kid when we went camping. Yeah. And my family are a bunch of, like, good-hearted Southern people. And so, rather than, you know, WebMD, you just do what good Southern <laughs> grandma did. <laughs> yeah. And you, I remember I was painted 
like spots just like painted me with uh, toenail polish mm-hmm. to uh, allegedly smother them like you're saying yeah i think the assumption was that they embedded themselves yeah but it's far grosser oh so, do <laughs> so they bite i could be wrong on this but or they, assume that you're not they bite yeah just assume that i'm right <laughs> about everything i say they bite and their saliva within the bite mm-hmm. uh like melts your flesh Kind of like a mosquito. Does it? Do they do that? Yeah, they like inject spit and stuff, and that's what irritates you. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so they 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 gooify your flesh and then Yum. embed them. They just like lay in it and eat it. And so you can get them out, um, but I guess they don't necessarily try to stay there. So some they can fall out on their own or whatever. So it's not that you're really trying to smother them it's that you're trying to clean them away so that they don't continue to gooify your oh. your skin hmm. both equally gross and kind of nasty to think about that happening especially like all over your body all at one time yeah <laughs> there's a hundred little things like Crawling rotting my all flesh over you yeah but so it turns out that like a really good scrubbing shower it's probably more beneficial long term than you know trying to smother them and stuff like that because they can get like embedded under the flesh and then they don't get smothered. They're just down there, hanging out, hanging out, and spitting all over your insides. Yeah. Super gross. Or you can just wear bug spray and not have to worry about it. I still don't really understand how we got them everywhere. I mean, you know, we don't have a bathroom out there, so everybody has to go to the bathroom. But. We go to the bathroom in areas that are like you got to dig a hole, and you know, if you make caca in the woods, yeah, if you're doing oh, that, okay. you got to dig a hole, and we know not to do that around like tall grass. So I know he wasn't there. I don't know how it happened, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna just hold it. That's my plan. <laughs> gonna hold it till I get home. All right, so that was a long answer. Oh, was that a question? What was the question? I don't remember. Coffee okay. or no coffee. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> coffee or no coffee. Coffee or no Let coffee. To making caca in the woods. And getting uh, rotten eaten by microscope and rotten flesh bugs. We're yes. good at this, you guys. <laughs> you want one more? Sure. All right. Uh, you have to live without air conditioning in your home or without heat in your home. Oh, man. Air conditioning or heat? Any source. He said, you have to live without air conditioning or live without heat. I mean, I know my answer. <clears throat> where am, where do I live? Here. Oh. Heat. No, I mean, I have to have heat. I would live without air conditioning. Really? Yep. Wow. Ugh. No way. Same logic as last week applies. I have a pool. I can wear less stuff. I have to not die. Yeah, but you can... I no. mean, whatever. living in the oh, RV. That's fine. that's fine. Living in the RV, every, our heater was powered by those propane bottles. <clears throat> and when the propane bottles went out, it was literally like a, a Charles Dickens book where I had to look at my family like, we don't have any heat anymore, family, until I went out and like bought more. That feeling of like my babies are shivering, like cuts me to the core now. It makes me angry when it happens. Like, oh, it's hot. Go swimming. I, I am less concerned about their, their hotness than I am about them shivering with their big doe children's eyes. Hmm. So I would live without AC. But, I mean, you can always bundle forever. Like, you can just... I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. My thinking is that, right. you know, you can only get so naked. And then you're just hot and naked. But you right. if you're cold, you can always... <laughs> you can always add more layers... <laughs> To be less cold. So, yep. but I, that's just, you know, what you're comfortable with, I guess. I For me, like, woof. Our house that we bought in Washington didn't have an air conditioner. And that was the first, and well, our house in Belgium didn't have one either. And, like, there were a few days where you're like, I noticed that I am miserable because it's hot. And I think it's, it's, it's absolutely a luxury. And so when you don't have that luxury, you acclimate a little bit better to the swing. Mm-hmm. My wife has a thing that she wants to feel the crispiness in the air. And so I laugh at her. So when we're in the car and I want to roll down the windows because it's nice out and she wants to roll them back up and turn the air conditioner on. I'm like, why are you doing that? She's like, crispiness. And so it's the crispiness of the air conditioning when you walk in. That like nice little, like I'm not cold, but that like, huh. ah, that little 
peppermint gum kind of like, ooh, kind of like feeling. The crispiness is what she calls it. I, it doesn't matter to me as much as it does to her. Huh. So when you get in your car, leave the air conditioning off, drive around, and then turn the air conditioner on. That feeling, that's the crispiness. Well, so I have a thing about like being in a car with, I know this doesn't bother you because I've been in the car. <clears throat> um, if I get into a car and the windows are shut, whether it's hot or not is, is a different part. But if I'm in the car and the windows are closed and there is no air moving, I just feel like... Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's disgusting. <sighs> like, yeah. the, the, just yeah. I need some, some motion. Agreed. Some air moving a little bit. And it drives me crazy when I get in the car with people who just... It's all shut off. And you're just stagnant. Yeah, I'm just like hot boxing and bleh. can't do it. It's it's hard. So I guess maybe that's similar to what she's talking about, where there's just like no, it's airflow, but the air has to have a little, is ch- not little chill. It's there's no other way to explain it other than that thing. She's like, it's just it could be like if it's cold outside or if it's just nice, and you turn on the air and you're like you crank the air up really like there's cool air blowing. It's just not over this unspoken threshold hmm. of being. Crispy, which makes no sense, but it makes perfect crispy. sense. Crispy, the air is crispy. Do you, I'm, I have an extra piece. Oh geez, which one? This one. Do you? Oh have yeah. Did you have an extra? Mm, one of those? Nope. Dang it! And it's like I'm looking at mm-hmm. it's deep inside. You got to do some for, surgery, sir. Man, or I could just pretend that it's not part of this set. Somebody left this piece on my desk. Oh shucks, what happened there? Mm, uh, the kids are gonna miss that one. All right, what about some pros and cons, or do you have any more, Anthony? I mean, I got one more for you. We can go pros and cons. Let's do pros and cons. Let's let the people speak. Okay. <laughs> the people speak. We'll save that one for later. Pros and cons. Where'd they go? Ah, found it. And it's an easy fix. Oh, good job. Yeah, I know. I missed pushing in those stud pieces. Oh, So when yeah. I put the little vent thingies on, it wasn't working. Hey-ya. Oh, while he's getting that, I've been continuing to work on the Batmobile. Yeah. Two nights. Mm-hmm. That thing is bananas. The, the the curves on the car itself are pretty incredible, like on the car. And then when they have to translate that into a Lego set, the yeah. compound holding, the side panels that are at like two angles, it, it's wild. It's really, really cool. It's almost a shame that it's black. Mm. Because when you glance at it, you miss the fact that yeah. the studs are facing every single direction and there's these weird like pieces that are hinged only for the sake of getting the angle slightly different than the ones next to them. And it's, it's so cool. It's a good set. And I'm on bag like 15 of 24 wow. or something. Man. All right, you got some? Yep. Can you see them? Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Justin, ask about... Unfrosted Pop Tarts. <laughs> okay. well, don't eat an unfrosted Pop Tart. <laughs> that shouldn't be called a Pop Tart. It shouldn't. It should be called Sad Stuffed Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> stuffed Cracker. That is the food version of not having the air conditioner on. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. Con. Yeah, no. Hard con. I need a con and pro graphics. That's a good idea. Next time. All right. All right, so what we got? Thanks, Justin. A barbecue nachos from Brent. Hey, Brent. I don't, uh, I don't know if I've ever had barbecue I, nachos, but uh, it sounds pretty great. I would like to... I would like to eat just about anything right now, but barbecue nachos <laughs> sounds pretty amazing. But we didn't talk about why you're not eating. Do you no. want to talk about why you're not eating? I have, I have a colonoscopy tomorrow. <laughs> And so I have to be on an all clear liquid diet today. I'm not laughing at you. And it sucks. <laughs> no, because I just immediately went to like, you must eat barbecue nachos right now. <laughs> I am super starving and that sounded amazing and I want to eat it. Do you think it would sound amazing if you weren't hungry? It would sound amazing regardless, but my stomach grumbled and then you said the words barbecue nachos. Oh, so I just compounded. I'm sorry. It's all right. I wonder if I can turn barbecue nachos into a clear liquid somehow and then eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Slurp the, it down. For the record, I was laughing at you. <laughs> I know. It's okay. fine. I went to go, like, during lunch. I was just, oh, what's on YouTube? All food, food videos. Uh, <laughs> that's a bummer. Yeah. It's routine, by the it's way. It's a bum. Bummer. Oh, that's really good. 
Yeah. Whoa. Just to clarify, you're, it's a routine thing. It's like nothing. Right. Yeah, they're going looking. I get yeah. colonoscopies every three years because the first time I had one, because my mom passed away of colon cancer. So I got a colonoscopy younger than people said that I should have gotten one, and they found some precancerous, as what they called it, polyps. So then every, I don't know, three years or whatever, I go get one. So three years is up, so I'm going to get one. So if you have an interest in spelunking. <laughs> All right. So the, oh, let's see, what's the next one? Two monitors versus one big monitor on your computer from Art. Hey, Art. Mm. Art's tall. I had this I problem like today. Personica. I prefer one big monitor. I have one of the, the dongles again because we use MacBooks and we got to go through these little adapter dongles every few weeks was going out and it kept wanting me to do two monitors. I don't want that because I want my laptop. I have my laptop in a drawer that's ventilated. So it's just like out of the way. And I have as much like unhindered desk space as I can. So for me, it's a real estate thing. So I prefer one. Well, I mean, what about if you had, and that there's not the weird gap in between. I like one big, long picture. I had, Dual monitors for years. I mean, I don't even remember a time when I worked on a single monitor because it was always like, I mean, I guess when I was in college, probably. But as soon as I got my own machine for work, you know, I own my own company. So we were buying machines and it was just like everybody has dual the end. And at the time, the single monitors were not big enough to, you know, you couldn't ever swap them out. When I found these ultra wides that we use, that was like, I'm never going back. That's the if anything, means, yeah. I'll take two of these things because then I can oh, wrap it man. around. And like, yeah. But they're awesome. I would much rather have a single ultra-wide than uh, dual. I do keep my laptop open now. I didn't used to. I used to keep it under my desk like you do. And I found that rather than swapping windows all the time so that I had things stacked, being able to move in and out of the things that I use a lot, I found that I keep the laptop open on the side of the desk and keep, you know, Twitter and mail on it so mm-hmm. that they're always within view because my email is just a disaster. It's just constant. So um, that lets me, like, glance at that, and then I can have all the other Slack and Airtable and all the things we use, Fusion, have they have more real estate without overlapping stuff quite as much. So I see that. That's why I, I do it. But When I was at Lockheed, we, <clears throat> we had laptops, uh, docks and a monitor and the monitors were just like the small HP monitors. Well, they somehow got new monitors and I just never gave my old one back and swapped it out. So like hmm. I had two monitors and everybody came up there like, how did you do that? Why do you have two? I'm like, cause it's great. It's you say it's classified. I, I very well could have, <laughs> but it was super great. And then everybody like tried to call the IT people like, can I get my monitor back? I'm like, yeah, you can just have two. That's a thing. Hmm. I'm I, we're, I'm missing pieces. Mission, missing the predicate of a sentence over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? <clears throat> Brian asks about meditation and mindfulness. I have tried uh, meditation more since starting therapy. Um, it, truth be told, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. When you do it right, it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like the meditation, just like listening to something and just like taking time to yourself or like having quiet time where you're not particularly trying to learn. You're just trying to focus on your breathing and think about, you know, the muscle tension in all the different parts of your body. And when you start to kind of have that, that rhythmic breathing, that like you inhale for the four seconds, you hold it and you exhale for the four seconds. So the more you think about your breathing, um, it's good, but it, It has a tendency sometimes for me to get me into like a hyperventilated state. Hmm. And when I was a kid and uh, I I started having migraines, my mom was a neurology nurse. So I went and had, it was called an EEG. You ever had an EEG before? I don't believe, I know what it is, but I don't think I've It's the trippiest craziness in the whole wide world is what it is. They like put all these little sensors all over your head. And then I remember the lady when I was like 12, she was like, okay, I need you to hyperventilate. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. There's two bag fours. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And she's like, you just sit there and close your eyes, and you just breathe rapidly in and out of your mouth. On purpose? Yeah, on purpose. And it is the trippiest craziness, because then you get all, like, the swirly purple colors, and, like, I just had to do that for, like, a... 
I don't remember. It seemed like a really long time while they were reading some brainwaves. Gosh. And so it's that like that feeling. You're not forcing yourself to breathe out like that, but like it, it gives you a sense of calm or maybe like a slight euphoria. And that for me, because I, I mean, I've never taken drugs or anything. It like, it makes me feel uncomfortable that it's making me feel a different right. type yeah, of yeah. way than I feel right now. Yeah. So it's good. It has a lot of positives. <clears throat> I mean, you can focus, you can kind of push all of the stuff of the day away. But for me, I, just, I, I trip out a little bit. Hmm. It's not something, honestly, I have any experience with. Uh, I, I know that being able to meditate on things and like the clearing of your mind can be really good for people. For me, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want that, but not for any particular reason. I just, so, I mean, as a, as a Christian, like I pray Mm -hmm. a lot, which I know is a different activity. It's a different focus. It's a different type of thing than trying to completely clear your mind. But for me, um, <clears throat> that practice, I think, has the a similar effect to what meditation would do for someone else. It's a stepping out of my own um, awareness of like the things that I have to do and the immediate things that I'm responsible for, and so it, I think, does some of the same stuff with a different intention. So yeah, I, I guess, think your intention with meditation is a really big part of it. Yeah, I could see that because I think uh, like when it was explained to me was you're trying to like loosen tension. <clears throat> and so you just do like a, like a scan of your body, like a mental scan. And as you get to like your head and your neck and your shoulders, you're trying to just like stop clenching those things. Hmm. And so it's not that I feel like I'm, I'm getting any better, like spiritually, like it's a, it's a very physical oriented thing. Right. Yeah. So I think they're, they're two different elements because yeah, as yeah. like you're talking about with praying, like there is a solace to it. There is a mindfulness. There is trying to be better. There's trying to have a relationship and communication and what other people may, may do the same thing with meditation. But when I was taught meditation, it was specifically as like a reaction to your physical being. Yeah. I think uh, people have that multiple ways to use the both things, I yeah. guess. Um, yeah, I just don't personally have any experience with it. So, um, I hope it's useful for some people though. Yeah. Pro. Yeah, sure. Woo. Um, <laughs> glitter. Oh my God. I hate glitter so bad. He'll throw in. Okay. For the sake of discussion, I will throw in metal flake and other paint additives in this category. Sequence. Sequence. <laughs> Our obese glitter. That's a fact. Discuss as necessary. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Was Old it uh, Dimitri Martin that said that glitter, glitter is <laughs> glitter. that glitter is the herpes of craft supplies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you think you've gotten rid of it, but you haven't? Yep. I can't stand glitter. It's terrible. And it's in everything. Like, if you have kids, yeah. it's in everything. It doesn't matter if, you know, you can say girly stuff, whatever. Everything that has any sort of a liquid in it has to have glitter in it. Every type of glue... Or every type of paper. There's, it, it's like every... Yeah. yeah, it's in gypsum. I mean, like you can see the glittery whatever it is in gypsum. It is everywhere. Never goes away. Hard con. Don't like it. Now, that being said, I have been painting a whole lot in the last couple of days, like, <clears throat> excuse me, with model paints. And I picked up a, a little container of black paint. It says black on it. Mm-hmm. And I squirt it down... And it's not black. It's like this gray. Nice. Did you stir it up? Did it have a little bit yeah, of Yeah, I mean, I shook it. Liquidy, it's whatever. It's an acrylic. I, I shook it up and everything. Hmm. But even looking at the container, it says it's like this kind of gray looking thing. And so I started swirling it around with the brush thinking, well, I mean, it'll work. It's not what I wanted, but it's fine. I realized it's a metallic. Yeah. So then metallic black is not black at all. So why call it black? Well, in that same lines, we are doing a thing. Somebody told you that you needed this, what was it called? Canyon Black? Canyon Black spray paint. <laughs> and so I went to the store, and it's all just black. I'm like, what does Canyon Black even mean? And so I had to go to Home Depot, and they have like a whole just beautiful palette of fancy, cutesy named spray paints. And there's Farmhouse Black and Canyon Black and Satin Black. And it reminded me of the... Um, 
Oh, crap. What was it? I don't know. There's a spinal tap when they're like, it looks like a pastel black. I'm like, they're, they're making fun of people. It's black. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you would probably be able to see a difference if you held them up next to each other. If I were in a canyon? I don't know what about a canyon is black, but I mean, it's... Well, at night. Maybe you should call it chasm black mm. to make it a little bit scary. There you go. All right. Um, guitar Hero from Corey. You said you had a guitar hero. I have story. a good... Okay. So are, are you pro or... Con? Pro. Guitar Hero is a blast. I yeah. used to play it a lot. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm terrible at it, but it's fun. It's fun. The first time I played guitar here was at a party, and I played a song I knew how to play, and I failed horribly, and I got angry. Mm. So then I <clears throat> I deployed. Um, the group that I was with, there were half of us that was in this one part of the country, another half is in the other part. And since I was an instructor, I could go back and forth and like evaluate people and whatever. And so I went to go see like the other crew of people. And I got there and I had to, I did a swap with a guy. And so I stayed in his room and he had a roommate and this, I doubt he listens. I hope he doesn't listen. <laughs> he was a weird dude, straight up weird dude. He was a, from another unit, he was a maintainer. So he, he didn't do what we did. And I remember I would try to go to sleep and we had this, uh, this net thing that like went in between. It was a, like a small shipping container. And so to split the, my oh. half and his half, we just like drew a big net on a, like a piece of string. And I would hear this like... <clears throat> And like I would randomly, the net thing would start moving. I'm like, what in the world is this dude doing? And so I'm like, hey, are you all right? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm real good. <laughs> and so like I pulled the thing back and he's playing guitar here and like thrashing around. Oh. Like he is in rat. He's in an 80s hair band. When he had no hair. He had his head buzzed. But he was like getting into it. But he was only playing on the first level. Oh, wow. It was only, okay. so like those noises, <clears throat> that was an exaggeration. It was more like, because <laughs> the first level on Guitar Hero is super easy. And I remember looking, I'm like, is that the highest level that you have gotten on that game? He was like, well, yeah, because I just want to work on my technique. I'm like, what? What are you even talking about? He's like, yeah, I can't really get into it as much if I have to play on the harder levels. He's like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm busy. And he like closed the flap kind of in in haste <laughs> and then just went back to like thrash hair banding guitar hero on the easiest possible level i mean all right so from one perspective i could see that like it's your chance to be a rock star without having to work at it if you're on the beginning level you know and like you get that feeling of you're hearing the music you're doing a thing and you get to thrash around and feel it without having to like really do it right sure i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I, I just remember, like, I was, I was in, a, I was having a hard time being over there, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, all right, I just gotta take a nap. I gotta go to sleep. Everything will be kind of better. Stuff is getting nuts. And then that happened. <laughs> I remember, like, what is happening right now? <laughs> Guitar Hero. Yeah. It's fun though. I like it as yeah, a game. Yeah, it's fun. All right, let's do a couple more. Yeah. Um, sushi, also from Corey. I love sushi. I hated sushi until I got back from my deployment, which is, again, weird. I don't know how those were linked. And that's all I wanted to eat. We <laughs> lived in Washington, and there was something about, like, the perceived freshness of it. And fresh was not a thing that we could have. Oh, so that's right. literally every meal I wanted to eat sushi. Interesting. Yeah. So nothing... It, just the freshness like there was nothing that said like oh i should maybe try sushi again i had tried it and i hated it when i was younger and yeah it was just something about like because everything we had we would either eat mres which are like <clears throat> containerized package stuff or just reheated stuff that the contractors would sell and so there was something about like that fish uh, and we lived in washington it was in, in seattle i'm like could have been alive and now it's not, and now I can just eat it. It doesn't have to be microwaved. Oh, okay. I don't have to like put ramen packets or whatever on it. Like I can just eat it the way it is. That was super appealing to me. Hmm. And from then on, sushi all day. I like some sushi. I don't like the like the big hunks of raw stuff. I honestly prefer like I don't know, like fried shrimp ones. Tempura? Shrimp, shrimp tempura roll yeah. type thing. I like the spicy ones and stuff like that, but I've just never been able to... I'll eat the other stuff. It's just not something I look forward to, but... Do you remember that sushi dinner we had? Yes. At Maker Faire? Yes. You want to tell people about that? That was fun. 
So we went to um, after Maker Fair in California. We were standing out like you know, fair's over, end of the Saturday or Sunday or whatever it was, mm-hmm. and we're standing out on the side of the road. We're like ready to go. Next to us is uh, it was me and you and my wife and your wife. Yes, and we had been walking with uh, Dan, who owns Glowforge, and Zach, who owns Inventables, and they knew each other. I knew both of them. You knew both of them, I guess. Or I didn't know Dan. I knew. Um... Zach. Zach, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so we're like all just kind of walking and we're like, yeah, let's get some food. Everybody, you guys want to get some food? And they're like, oh, yeah, sushi would be good. And Dan's like, oh, I know a sushi place that's right around the corner. That blah, 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 blah. Dan's awesome. Super nice guy. But knows a lot of stuff. And apparently. apparently lived in Japan. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't know this till we get to the place. We find this little place. We sit down and the guy comes to take our order or girl, whoever it was. And he and Zach just like go into... I want this, and I want this yep. one, and this, and one of these. Oh, can yep. you leave off the blong and replace it with the blee? And, yep. and there were no like, California rolls being mentioned anywhere no, in this no, no, conversation. No, no. It was a bunch of Japanese words that yeah. I'd never heard before, and it was really impressive. So all this food shows up. Most of it, I'm not really that interested in eating because it's like giant hunks of raw things. And I tried some stuff, but it was a little bit surprising, you know, because we were like, "Oh, cool, we get to hang out with these guys." and and then they just knew a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't know, at least. It yeah. was interesting. That was a that was, was fun. fun to be, because Dan, I remember, was on one end of the table talking to the waitress, and uh, you and Zach were on the other end, and then our wives were having conversations. So I was kind of in the middle, and I could, like, swap back to both conversations. <laughs> and at one point, I remember looking over at you and Zach, and Zach going, have you seen these, like, flat earther videos? He's like, <laughs> these idiots that believe in flat earthers? And I was like, huh, that's fun. It was really late in societal, like consciousness to like yeah that that had been a thing people had dispelled it and it seemed like he was hearing about it for the first time which yeah. was fun and then i go back over to the conversation with jenny and tiff and dan and they're talking about like i have to find the best tabletop popcorn popper yeah and i remember like <laughs> what is happening right now <laughs> there's food in front of us that i can't pronounce nor determine its its origin of species and these are just two yeah. flabbergasting strange conversations this is fun it yeah that's fun. That's a maker fair is kind of like that, man. Yeah. You just like end up in like weird situations with awesome people and mm-hmm. learn a bunch of stuff from people you never knew. Yeah, very cool. All right, so we're about an hour. I want to eat sushi right now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe that'll be my that'll be my victory dance meal tomorrow. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, can't dance too much, but it's, it's fine. I'm just kidding. All right, let's do one more. Something not food related. <laughs> And he clicks on Cracker Barrel. <laughs> so let's do Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel would not be my first choice to eat. Uh, it seems like whenever I go home, it, Cracker Barrel is like the, oh, the we're about to get on the road. Let's go get breakfast so that all of the family members can come say bye to us. It usually happens at Cracker uh, Barrel. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, as far as like a southern representation of food to the masses, eh, whatever. I grew up in the South. The food <laughs> is not super great. It tastes like microwave Southern food. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike Cracker Barrel. I, I don't think I would like. You know what we should have tonight, guys? Cracker Barrel. Yeah. I wouldn't do that, but uh, I don't mind it. And I guess we eat it when we're on the road. It's an easy way to get. You know, let the kids kind of choose. Hey, you can have breakfast for dinner, or dinner for dinner, or lunch for dinner, or a little bit of all of them for dinner. So. Do you want to look at? dvds from the 1950s tv shows <laughs> yeah. let's go to cracker barrel yep i have had a hankering for fried okra lately I like and i know around okra. like i can go to cracker barrel and get some fried okra true so uh mm, i don't want to go so far as to say con but should we come up with a word that's right in the meh. middle <laughs> that's meh. that's like a meh. little bit of a it's like on the negative side of middle okay uh, boing. <laughs> <laughs> it bounces off me. I'm the, the rubber and glue type thing. I, I'm, not, okay. I'm not offended by it. I'm indifferent to it. <laughs> boing. Boing. I like it. Excellent. Well, I think that's a fantastic place to wrap up this show. <laughs> Gotta end um, on the boing, guys. Thanks to our Maker Alliance. Check out this shirt. Is this for sale? No. Okay, I think I might have the only one of these you shirts. You do. But this is the Alliance, Maker Alliance logo, which Forby did and looks awesome. Yep. The Maker Alliance is a group of people who um, 
help out I Like to Make Stuff who are part of the kind of behind the scenes group that you know we have a lot of discussion with. We have like monthly meetings. They get discounts on all this plans and merch. and Some get free plans. That's true. A lot of get free plans. Uh, it's a really cool group of people. All these pros and cons came from members of the Maker Alliance. So we don't exclusively take them from the Maker Alliance. We can source them from anywhere. But again, they are the easiest to uh, rally the troops and get some information. Bang, yes. they're right there. And, you know, hang out with them on Discord and stuff like that. It's exclusive to them. So if you want to check that out, go to ilikesmakesf.com slash join. join. Um, we have more new things coming soon that I would, I'm anxious to tell people about, but I'm not gonna. So they will find out about it first, guaranteed. Yep. So if you want to hear We should go tell them right now. Oh, we could. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, so go check that out if you're interested. But regardless, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Where can people find you? On the internet at Josh underscore make stuff. You can find all of us at I like to make stuff on all the stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Have fun tomorrow. I will be asleep through the entire thing. That's true. I, I will not know what's happening. I will go in and I will try. I have a thing where I go under anesthesia and I try to like not. Try to fight it. I try to get all the way to one when you count back from 10. It never happens. You should see. try like counting really fast this time. Ooh, that's a good call. And have them video it because I want to see you to try to count backwards fast. <laughs> well, apparently, while you're, like, on when drugs. I get done, uh, I'm just going to go to my house and I'm going to try to get a little bit of work done. But are we going to play Minecraft all together after I've been under anesthesia for the day? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's going it. to be as fun. It's yeah. not going to be wisdom teeth level yeah. hilarity. I think we'll wait a little bit okay. on that. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.